All right, settle down, settle down. We're going to get started. Um, so we're just very briefly this morning, uh, before we start sort of the, the formal program, um, I'm just going to do a real, uh, a real brief informal kind of retrospective or history lesson for, your, for you guys. Um, so my name's Dave Kale. Uh, I am a PhD candidate at the University of Southern California Information Sciences Institute, uh, and I'm one of the uh, organizers of this meeting. Um, and actually, I'm also the, the co-founder of kind of the, the progenitor meeting, which was something called the Meaningful Use of Complex Medical Data Meeting, or MUCMED, the world's worst acronym ever. And, um, yeah, and, and you, can, you can see that the, there's vestigial parts of MuckMed left over in MLHC um, all the way down to the URL, which I, I promise, I think by next year, we're going to actually migrate over. We have a domain. We just haven't moved it over yet. So, um, so anyway, so I just want to tell you a little bit about MuckMed. Since um, kind of sort of surprising to me, uh, yesterday when we asked who here in attendance um, was at the first MuckMed meeting, there were only uh, three hands raised, which was actually like very surprising. So, uh, so I just want to tell you a little bit about it. So um, I was working at Children's Hospital of Los Angeles um, with a gentleman by the name of Randall Wetzel, who uh, is the bearded man there in the bow tie. Um, and anyway, um, sort of the, the, the idea here was uh, we had a grant, and in that grant we said that we were going to do a symposium. And, um, uh, and so um, as the grant sort of ran on and we approached the end, we realized we hadn't done it yet. And we're like, oh, crap, we got to do this symposium really fast. And we're kind of deciding how, how we wanted to proceed and what we wanted to do. And um, just randomly one day, um, I read this blog post on John Langford's blog, Hunch.net, which is an excellent machine learning blog, um, where basically he had read a New York Times article about sort of um, how clinical trials are run. And, um, they dug up a, a situation where you had twins, and one had been assigned to the control group, and the other had been assigned to the experimental group. And they were just recounting how um, kind of halfway through the trial, it became very obvious that the experimental arm, the treatment worked. Um, but, uh, you know, but they had to sort of finish the trial and follow standard clinical trial procedures, and the twin in the control group ended up dying. And they sort of left, you know, in those kinds of situations, which, you know, maybe aren't that common, but they still leave you with the feeling that, like, you know, why? Why couldn't we have saved the other guy, too? And um, John, uh, John Langford, of course, works on learning theory, and part of what he works on is reinforcement learning. And basically, in this blog post, he kind of just argued that, like, that we don't need to do that. We, we have tools in reinforcement learning today that could allow us to do more flexible, more adaptive clinical trials. And, of course, this was seven years ago. So I showed this to, uh, I, I sent this blog to Randall, and Randall wrote back and said, get this guy to come speak at the symposium. And specifically, Randall said, actually, that's what I want the symposium to be. I don't want any, anyone that I would see at an informatics conference or at a medical conference or something. I don't want any of those people. I've already heard what they have to say. There's nothing new. I don't want to hear any of that. Just find me all machine learning people who have nothing to do with healthcare whatsoever and invite them and ask them to tell us how they think you know, their tools could maybe make an impact on healthcare. Um, and that was kind of sort of the, 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 the kernel. And so th that's why I put up this photo. Because there's uh, Randall and myself, and then um, John Langford um, over on the end. And I'm really sad that this isn't full length, because you can't see that uh, John was wearing sh uh, cargo shorts, dress socks, and sandals. It was fantastic. Um, and then his wife, Alina Bagelzimmer, as well. So they were a couple of the speakers. I'm going to show you the program. So uh, here they are right here. Uh, they did like a two-part talk on sort of doing bandit problems, sort of, sort of, you know, kind of more mo modern machine learning approaches to bandit problems, reinforcement learning, et cetera. We also had folks, we had some sort of big data systems guys. We had Chris Matman from NASA JPL and uh, good old Jeff Hammerbacher from Cloudera, who coined one of Randall's favorite phrases ever, party on the data. Um, and that became sort of a motto of MuckMed. Um, and we also had Stuart Russell from UC Berkeley, who was great. Um, I don't know if uh, Christian Shelton's in here. Oh, there he is. So Christian was uh, Christian had the unenviable position of presenting on Saturday morning at 8:30 a.m. Um, so it was a really exciting meeting and, and a lot of great ideas. And and the feedback over the course of two or three years of MuckMeds was people loved the meeting and they they we had people who like said, oh, I won't go to Amy anymore. It's too big. But they loved the way that that MuckMed was small fostered a lot of conversation, and really focused on getting clinicians and computationalists in the same room, which is, of course, one of the goals of MLHC. 
So now, of course, we're a, a big meeting, and we have, you know, sort of a, we have a proceedings, we have a review process, we're growing. Probably in about two or three years, this will be a massive conference, and we'll all want to quit because it's too, inform too impersonal, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, but uh, I think we're, we're going to try to keep the spirit of MuckNet alive and keep this a place where there's a lot of dialogue, there's a lot of new, potentially disruptive ideas. It's not just people reporting research, but it's also sort of sparking new ideas and sparking dialogue and, um, and uh, new collaborations, those kinds of things. So really make an effort today during breaks to go talk to people you don't know. Find people from a discipline that you, that, that's not your own, that you don't share. Find, if, you're a, if you're a computer scientist, find a doctor. If you're a doctor, find a statistician, et cetera. Um, and I think one of the things, one of the things that I'm, I'm hoping we're going to revive, Christian and I were discussing this morning, is I think we need to, uh, uh, in next year's meeting and moving forward, we need to bring back this tradition of having at least one talk that is totally irrelevant, just totally out of the blue. Um, uh, just to give you an example, the second year of MuckMed, we had someone come talk about analyzing streaming sensor data from Formula One race cars. So, so if you have ideas about uh, completely randos that we can invite to speak, please uh, let me know. So.